Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And it's been almost two years since last I tried the realism challenge. Now, as many of you guys know already, I almost always draw in an extremely cartoony style. I actually used to draw a little more realistically than I do now, but when I started working on my comic, I knew that I wanted to simplify and make it look a little more bouncy, cute, and cartoony, and I have been doing that ever since. And since that, I have really lost um, any uh, practical skill that I ever had in drawing realistically. Now, I did go to art school for four years when I got a bachelor's in design, but even there, I only had a scattering of um, chances to really practice realistic portraiture. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Now, like I said, about a year and a half ago, I tried this challenge before, and honestly, I think I failed massively. One of the top comments is someone basically saying that as nicely as they can, um, <laughs> that while the picture is nice to look at, it's definitely not realistic, and I wholeheartedly agree. So I'm going to try and do a little better this time, and I'm going to be redrawing the same image so that hopefully we can see some really cool improvement. But like I said, I haven't really been practicing, so um, we're going to have to just hope for the best. So the first step for me before I really got cracking on this portrait was to look at the old one I did and basically kind of try to critique myself and see what I want to work on because I definitely wanted there to be at least some clear improvement otherwise I'd be really depressed by the end of this. So the first thing that I noticed right away is of course um, the proportions are completely crazy. I remember as I was doing it back then I was really trying to focus on trying to create a human face that had similar proportions to the cartoon character but you really can't do that and also call it realism because even people and celebrities who are known for having like really big eyes and really small noses or whatever um, it doesn't go quite this far so I just went I went too overboard I had too much cartoony um, proportions and cartoony exaggerations in this face so that was one of the first things I wanted to try to work on is making sure that I was balancing everything out and making it look a little more human um, I also decided to use references I know crazy right? Um, there's been a lot of drama about references and like what's the difference between tracing and referencing and like is referencing cheating. Honestly, I kind of hate using references because um, I like to just sort of draw straight out of my imagination, but I can't say that referencing doesn't improve things, especially when you're trying to draw something realistically. And basically anytime you're drawing something you're not super familiar with or has a lot of details, like a pair of shoes for example, just looking at a picture of them is really helpful and you don't have to trace it. You don't have to draw it exactly the way that you see it. It's kind of just there to remind you of details that your mind's eye might forget. Um, and with a human face, this is better than ever you know like this is even more important because the human face has a lot of little nuances that you're going to forget um, when you're just trying to draw straight out of your mind and I can see a lot of problems that came out of that with my first attempt at this portrait because she looks very flat and there's a lot of areas where she's just like missing dimensionality where she should have it like in my first attempt at this portrait she basically doesn't have a bridge of her nose I only really drew the bottom part of her nose and then everything between her eyes down to like the the top part of her nose is like just a flat wasteland and like nobody really looks like that um so that was another big issue as well as just not pushing the depth of things enough like obviously with a human mouth like that's just a i mean not to be like weird and gross but like it's just a hole in your face so like it has to look like deep you know like it has to look like the, the colors have to be more substantial you need to see depth there otherwise it looks like a painting on someone's face like a doll you know where there's just like a fake crease or something um so like pushing that depth keeping the proportions reasonable and just trying to pay attention to those little details that you'll forget are one of the key things that i really wanted to focus on here and i gotta be honest i was really struggling at the start here i was like having a really hard time and like everything was looking just wrong but i tried to just stay calm and push through any of that and anytime something was looking wrong I just completely wiped it out and started over especially with painting it seems like it's really hard to make little changes so I like to just sort of start from scratch anytime that's happening and um, especially with her eyes I was having a lot of problems with that I think I was putting in way too many details and it kept looking like a like a Barbie doll eye like there was just too much there's too much detail um, that's one of the things that I learned on this attempt for sure especially when it comes to the eyes starting pretty simple and only adding details 
when it seems like you need them is a really good way to make them not look sort of overdrawn and bizarre. Um, and another thing that I really like to do was uh, filling in sort of the darker areas and then putting a little highlight on top. That really worked with her nose and I think it really helps the whole image um, look more like she has like skin and not like she's just sort of this flat two-dimensional drawing. Um, that was one of the things that really helped pull this one um, up from like quality wise from the previous attempt that I had made. I think one of the worst things about the previous portrait that I made was the hair and so I was very very nervous to move on to that step. I was kind of fussing over the face for a long time trying to think of how I was going to make the hair look better because honestly I really like to draw hair in a cartoony style so I've never really looked into how to draw hair more realistically and I think it really shows like I think the hair in the first portrait just looks like a mushy clay nightmare um, so I knew one of the first things that I wanted to do was just try to get a little more dimension in it and make it look more like there were individual sort of chunks and strands um, instead of this sort of mushy uh, plane of, of hair. Uh, so the first thing that I tried to do was I tried to make a mask um, where I would sort of uh, take this shape I wanted of her hair and then build in shading um, inside a clipping mask so that it wouldn't sort of escape the shape that I had made. But I actually found that this didn't really work for me because I had all these very delicate little tendrils and then the clipping mask sort of um, didn't really help me because uh, it started to look really mushy and strange when I tried to add highlights. Um, it just like, it, it just looked bizarre. It didn't really work. So um, from that point forward, I tried to instead sort of just use a couple different layers on top of each other and uh, draw straight onto the portrait, if that makes sense. Um, trying to show dimensionality in the hair and switching between the mid, high, and low lights of her hairstyle. And I think that looked a little bit better. And then I did an entirely different layer underneath everything for her ponytail. I've used references of like Ariana Grande and other girls who wear these like very extreme high ponytails and tried to look at that a little bit more. Like I said, referencing can be hugely helpful, especially if you're a cartoonist lost in this uh, realism world trying to make up for a lot of years of not practicing it. Um, looking, Just looking at a photo really quickly of a real example might help you a lot. Now this is when her hair started to come together and well at the end I still don't think that it looks particularly realistic. I think it definitely looks a lot better and um, I think that if I kept working on it and kept adding more and more little details uh, it would eventually start to look like real hair. But I do like the sort of texture I was able to build out of it and um, I feel like it at least is looking like I said it's, it's looking like an improvement. Um, I really liked how her freckles came out. Uh, a good way to make freckles look a little more realistic is to just add uh, very light freckles and then dark freckles and sort of just try to make it a little bit random not not too like like boop 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 right on their cheek you know um, put it in some places that aren't like super like like especially cute I mean I think they all look very cute but like a little higher on the bridge of her nose or closer to her mouth it just makes it look more realistic because um, obviously your freckles don't just stick on one part of your cheeks or whatever um, and uh, for her eyebrows I tried to just sort of add a shadow of what her general eyebrow shape would be and then build in individual hairlines um, inside of it and I think that that worked out pretty well I actually kind of wish I had made it a little bit darker but because her eyebrows are so small and light in the cartoon version I was more um, trying to keep it you know not too not too Instagram intense um, but looking at it now I do kind of wish that I'd added a little bit more to it um, and uh, for the bow I put it in between the ponytail and the uh, bangs hair layer which was really convenient because then it sort of stuck exactly where it is supposed to be and I tried to just build up a uh, genuine feeling of like it being a, a physical shape in the real world. That was something I think I really, really um, wimped out on in the first portrait. It just did not, it did not look like a three-dimensional object at all. I think by that point I was kind of giving up. I'll say my number one regret for this one was that I wasn't able to give her a strong expression of any kind and I think that was one of the things that like I didn't really bother with it because I was really focused on trying to make her look more like a real person but um, in retrospect I just wish that I tried to give her a bit more of a specific expression rather than this sort of just vacant um, interest or 
concern or whatever is going on with her face. Um, it's really hard when you're, you know, so so weak at uh, realism to give them a expression of any kind. It's 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 one of the reasons why like pictures of pretty girls with just no expression on their face are so popular in like art school and stuff is because it's there's so many reference photos of girls sort of just pouting into the camera that that's that ends up looking like a lot of people's art ends up looking like you know because that's what you're working with that's what you're referencing um but it, yeah i already know that next time next time i do this and i do plan to plan on doing this again um probably next year or at least that long into the future that um i will try to focus on making her more expressive next time and of course even more realistic so hopefully i will have made big improvements by then um and we can keep sort of the the chain of improvement going so at this point i was just adding the last final touches and then she was done what do you guys think do you think i improved since last time i think that uh, in my opinion, I definitely have improved quite a bit, but there's still a lot that I want to keep working on, which is good because honestly, if I was happy with where I'm at, I probably wouldn't try to get better. Um, so it's better it's better to not be happy with where you're at because then at least you have something to move towards, right? Um, please feel free if you want to try out this challenge, just have a picture of your regular cartoon style, assuming that you're a cartoonist already, um, and then draw a realistic portrait of that character beside them and feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. I would love to see that because this challenge is very difficult but very good for you. I feel like almost everyone regardless of what your style is will benefit from this. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit more low-key than a lot of my videos usually are but I was just I was in the mood to, to just sort of stretch out my artistic skills so hopefully you guys don't mind. Um, thank you so much for watching till the end and I will see you in the next one. A big thank you to all of my patrons, including Bella Story, Kalpompong, Cassitarius, Clockwork Construct, Dionysus, Hagarillus, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Alvin, Hope Chilsom, Imagine Creation, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Carla Tapia, Cat Did That, Q Did It, Megan Claire, Midnight Doodles, Micah Dactyl, Okamore, Ollie, Rome Espinoza, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Your Boy ST, and Zoe Stardust.